So in this video here, we're going to talk about how you can contribute to the Autolytic repository. So if you're finding any errors, bugs, or you just have additional features that you want to integrate into the Autolytics framework, then we're basically just going to see how you can do it in this video here. We're going to see how we can fork it, make our changes, and then do a pull request. What are the requirements and so on? How can we make contributions to the documentation as well? Because we need to actually document it. This is a very large repository with a lot of different contributions as we're going to see as well. So there's not really any better place to start this video here than inside the Autolytics GitHub repository. This is where all the code files are, where you can find all the code, you can find the source code and everything. If you want to integrate new features, you can go in and add it directly here. This is the folder structure. If you go over to the right here first, we can take a look at all the different contributors. We can see we have 381 contributors right now. If you make pull requests and so on, merged into the main brand and so on, you will also become a part of it. It's really good way to learn both computer vision, but also just coding in general and working in larger code bases. Could be different software systems and so on. This is also how you will work out in a company. So it's a really good learning experience to contribute to open source frameworks, but it's also a good way to get your name out there, work on some cool projects and the Autolytics community is very awesome. If you have any questions and so on, you can always reach out, ask the questions. A lot of people are happy to help you out as well. So right now, let's just go inside all the contributors to start with. And we can see basically like all the contributors, the number of commit, community standards and so on. So we can see all these different graphs where you can scroll through them and see all the people who has contributed. We see the number of commits here in 2024 is basically just going up. Also the, day, the whole framework here is growing a lot. Very good computer vision models and a very nice framework where you can set up whole pipeline, train your own models, run inference and so on with just a few lines. So let's now go back into our code again. We see there's also a lot of issues that need to be addressed, pull requests and so on. So if you want to go in, act like got, just get some tasks, you can go inside the issues, take a look at some of them. And if you can resolve the error, you can go in and make a pull request, forward it, make changes, do a pull request and make sure that you have the correct documentation as we're going to go through as well. We all see there's tons of different pull requests already in the making. But this is the main code base that we're going to talk about. You can contribute to it. You can go and read all about it here. We also have the nice documentation. Inside the documentation, you can read about every single part of the whole both code structure, all the different functionality, solutions, data sets, and so on. So if we go back in again, we can then go up at the top. At the top here, we can fork it almost 7,000 forks and also 35,000 stars. First of all, you can also just go in, zip it here. You can download it. You can also go in and just create a pull request directly from here. But let's now go in and fork the repo. So right now, I'm just going to click here. There we go. I can just repost our name. It is available. I'm going to create a fork. And we're only going to copy the main branch for now. And then I will have it inside my own profile. I can then make commits to that and make a pull request into the main branch after that. So right now we see that I have forked it. I can then go in and grab the code. There we go. I can then open a new terminal. I'll just drag it over here. We can git clone. I'm just going to clone this into Autolytics. Then you can open it up in whatever whatever editing tool and so on that you're using. Right now you can just directly CD into Autolytics. There we go. I'm using cursor, so you can just write cursor. If you're using code, VS code, you can just write code. So cursor dot, and it's going to open up cursor with this folder. So now we can see we have the exact same folder structure as inside the repo. We have the docs, we have the example, and then we have the main files here for the Ultralytics. We have the different trackers, we have the different solutions where you can go in and do optic counting and so on. So this is pretty cool. We have the NN module, we have the different models and so on. So FastSAM, NAS, real-time detection transformers could be a new model that's coming out. You can then go in and basically just add that model here that will require like really good documentation. But let's say that you're creating a new YOLO model and so on, working on that. We have the Ultralytics hub, engine, data and all that. So it's really good and intuitive code structure. But you can basically just create your changes. Let me just go inside, for example, the solutions. We can take AI gym. Right now, I'm just going to change something. Of course, you will change something um, that makes sense. It might be that you're fixing an error or basically just adding new functionality. So right now, I'm just going to go in here and increment by two. 
instead of or just one for our up counter in our gym solution we have videos covering all this as well so make sure that you check it out but then i have made a change here i can go in and state the change i will make a commit message so i have an update we will commit it and we will sync the changes so once we have synced the changes i can go inside my github profile inside my repositories and then we can see i have made this fork there we go and now we can see that i've made a change right now so when you actually like want to contribute you can just go in and open a pull request so now i have made my changes i will make a pull request now we need to go in and add a description you have a pretty good guideline here just going over each individual steps but you need to have some different configurations and so on that i'm going to open up in just a second but you also need to sign this contribution license agreement but then it's pretty much it you add your documentation here you add very good descriptions and you create a pull request and then it will get reviewed and merged into the main brands if it's good so yeah this is basically like how the whole process works of making a pull request and contributing to a open source framework as also Linux. If you then go inside our documentation, you can also contribute to that. So if you're integrated like larger features and so on, or you just want some updated documentation or more details, you can go in here and do the exact same thing. You just fork it, go inside the docs folder here instead of the Autolytics package that are just created um, at pull request four. Then we have data set guides and so on. And let's just go inside the data set, for example, we have detection. Then we can see we have all these markdown files for our Documentation, this is all the same documentation as you're seeing on the website. So right now we just found the data set. So let's go inside our data sets tab. Data set, we had object detection and which one did we take? We took the Coco MD, so that will be this one. So this will be the exact same as we have inside the GitHub repository here. This is how you can make contribution. And if you go inside the data set, you can also contribute to the data set. First of all, collect the images, annotate them, export annotations, and organize the data set. This is just the data set format the Autolytics is using. We need our data YAML file, and that's pretty much it. You'll just create a pull request as I showed you, and you can also contribute with a data set. So code contributions, solving errors, adding new functionality, making contributions to the documentation and also data sets. If you have a very cool data set, we can see we have all these over to the left directly out of the box. So this is very awesome. I definitely encourage you to go in and contribute to open source projects. You meet a lot of new people. You get to work on larger code bases, how you can pull, integrate different solutions, integrate different features into a larger code base. You'll make good contributions. You will learn a lot over time and you will get way more familiar with the framework that you're working with. So definitely go in, make some contributions, and then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.